it used to be said that the Englishman's home is his castle. In the future, if renewable energy advocates and electric vehicle backers have their way, an Englishman's home will be a power station. One of the laments you frequently hear from fossil fuel lobbyists and renewable energy sceptics concerns the intermittency problem. These advocates point out that energy from the sun and wind isn't always available because there are calm days and dark nights, so in their view a predominantly renewably powered grid is unsustainable. Of course, they seldom mention the fact that fossil fuels will not always be available either, but if you view the intermittency problem as insurmountable, as some of these advocates do, then you're accepting that at some point we will no longer be able to reliably generate electricity. Still, it's generally acknowledged that we're going to need bigger and better batteries to achieve a goal of 100% renewable power. Batteries can be scaled more easily. It makes no sense to have an entire hydroelectric dam to power a single house or building. But a home equipped with solar panels could happily transfer excess generated energy to a battery during sunny days to be used to power the house at night. Although new breakthroughs are being reported all the time, battery research and development, and manufacturing of course, must be vastly improved before this is a truly scalable solution. One aspect that might concern economists is the installation cost. As the price of solar panels plummets, a bigger and bigger fraction of the cost of actually installing a solar panel is down to that initial installation. The same will presumably be true of battery systems for the home. If batteries see the same decline in prices as market forces at innovation we've seen over the last few years, the price will invariably be driven down. But batteries may have a specific advantage over solar panels because in the future, when the transition to full renewable energy should be well underway, Many people already have a decent rechargeable battery, the powerhouse inside their electric cars. Now, Tesla Model X batteries currently got to 100 kilowatt hours in terms of maximum capacity, and they can be charged in around seven hours. Although Tesla remains the poster child for electric cars, other companies are beginning to catch up. Outside of car manufacturers, perhaps the most promising developments have seen several governments, including China and the United Kingdom, beginning talks to ban or phase out fossil fuel cars altogether in the next few decades. Now, of course, this tacitly assumes that their technology and prices will improve to the extent that everyone will have an electric car in the future. This means that households will have access to a ready-made battery sitting on their driveways. The advantage is that this scheme really ties in well with how people use their cars. If you're a commuter who drives to work in the morning, your car will probably be in the office car mark for most of the day. There it can be charged by the grid whilst you work, at a time the electricity grid is awash with solar power. When you return home and night falls, your car's battery could supplement the grid by providing additional energy to your home appliances. Average energy consumption in the US for households is around 32 kilowatts per day. European and Japanese households consume less than half that amount. Look, in other words, even with Tesla's modern day 100 kilowatt hour battery, less than a third of the battery power could provide all the energy your home needs for a full day. However, those aren't the only benefits we can imagine. In the UK, electric car owners are being paid to let an energy company use their vehicle's battery in a pioneering scheme to increase uptake of cleaner vehicles and help power grids manage the growth in green energy. Nissan and one of the UK's biggest energy suppliers, OVO, is offering a vehicle-to-grid service to buyers of the Japanese car maker's new LEAF from this year. After installing a special charger in the customer's home, the supplier will take over the management of the car's battery, with owners able to set a minimum charge they want for the next day. OVO will then automatically trade electricity from the battery, topping it up during off-peak hours when power prices are around 4 pence per kilowatt hour, and selling it at peak times for around 4 times as much. The key word for the electricity grid of the future will be flexibility. An infrastructure that's capable of receiving electricity from a multitude of sources, spread out over a variety of locations, meeting intermittent supply and demand needs. It's also going to need to be capable of storing and transporting electricity in a more efficient way than we currently do today. It's already the case that we can transport electricity between different countries to overcome the intermittency problem. Norway and Denmark do this with the high voltage DC cable power connections that can transmit electricity far more efficiently over longer distances. That way, windy Denmark can export its power to Norway and Norway's unique fueliness allows it to send the hydroelectric power back to Denmark, resulting in a more robust system for both countries. Adapting our power grid and energy systems to a renewable future 
a cleaner, greener future will be a big challenge. But of course, it's also a highly necessary one. The fact that electric cars could provide a battery energy storage infrastructure just as the world needs one is a fortunate coincidence. If an Englishman's home really is a castle, then get ready for the coming charge at the gates. <laughs>